Jack Dosey has said that he wants to improve the collective health and civility of openness of public conversation on Twitter, but also to be publicly accountable to it. But today in Nigeria, he didn't speak to journalists. He showed up, took a picture, and did not answer any questions. We don't know what the purpose of the trip is. He says he wants to spend more time with entrepreneurs on the continent, so he's going to go to Ghana, he's going to go to Ethiopia and South Africa as well, and those are good kind of regional hubs to be going into. Larry, tell us what more we know about some of the victims. Well, Victoria, some of the victims are getting identified now from British citizens, of which there were seven on this aircraft, but also the biggest, most affected country is Kenya, which had 32 victims, and there were 18 Canadians. There were a lot of people from around the world. It's a truly global tragedy. In the last few minutes, we have just heard from State TV in Ethiopia reporting that the black box or the flight recorder has been found. We're waiting to confirm that, but that would be a key discovery in trying to figure out exactly how a four-month-old aircraft came down six minutes into flight operated by one of the most senior captains working for Ethiopian Airlines he had 8,000 hours in the sky if anybody could handle this plane it was him let's speak to Larry Madoa who's at Nairobi Airport where the plane was due to land and what are they saying about it there good morning Larry good morning Louise so this morning Life goes on. In fact, Ethiopian Airlines flight EC302 is scheduled to land here at 10.15 a.m. as normal. That flight code has not been retired. But families here have a support center where they can get more information from the airline and also get counseling if they need it. They will be waiting to hear from authorities in Ethiopia how quickly the bodies can be released to them. Now, joining us is our Africa editor, Larry Madoa. Thank you very much for joining us, Larry. Lovely to see you. Lovely to have you in the studio. Yeah. It's great to be back here. Yes. So, missing billionaire, it happens surprisingly frequently across the world. What do we know? This is a man who's very well known. He's a two-time MP. Um, his business um, spreads across six African countries. So, he just basically, does, nobody knows where he is. That's really scary. And there's been no demand for ransom at all. And he's Tanzania's only billionaire. He's, absolutely. He's said to be Africa's youngest billionaire at How old uh, is he? about 43. And he's very well That's known really, in Africa. Really young. Yes. That's practically a child. <laughs> practically very close a child. To my age. <laughs> so, yes, I, like, I like the young Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, good to see you, my friend. So, are people walking the streets of Nairobi shouting Wakanda forever? Tell us about the reaction there on the continent to this movie. There is, excit there is excitement, Aisha, all over the continent, not just in Lagos. Here in Nairobi, I'm dressed like this because everybody's going to the movie super excited to see a superhero that looks like us. In a positive role, Wakanda, this fictional African country is in East Africa, so not too far from Kenya, where I am. And really, for a film industry from, for Hollywood that has so many white saviors, it's beautiful to see finally an African, save an African superhero in this kind of role. The excitement all over the continent is unbelievable. Larry, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Um, okay, I know I spoke to you a little earlier and I used the word basket case and you sort of said, well, not just quite yet. It is a messy situation, but South exactly. Africa should not, with all the riches that country has, it shouldn't be in this state, should it? It should not be. It is certainly not a basket case. It is far from that. It is Africa's most developed economy, but it's got issues. It's got a lot of issues. Unemployment at 27% is unprecedented. That is a 15-year high. And it's a country that's struggling with public enterprises, the biggest of which is ESCOM struggling to keep the lights on that's electricity company and it is symptomatic of the wider problems with other major state-owned companies like the national carrier south african airways which has not made a profit aaron since 2011. well joining us now is our africa editor larry maduo he's um in abuja the economy has come out of recession in 2017 after 25 years in recession has even grown slightly but it's still sluggish, inflation is high, it's at the top of people's minds, and uh, recent data shows that 87 million people live in poverty in Nigeria. That is higher than the number of registered voters in the country, which is 84 million. So when they go to the polls tomorrow, they will be trying to elect who it is that can turn their life around. There's been also rumors circulating again on social media that some, the internet might be shut down and the regulator of the communications, uh, authority, the communications authority here as well as the Electoral Commission again want, telling people that's not likely to happen. There might be congestion on the network but it should be fine. The government has no plans to shut down the internet or to limit social media. I remember your home, so you're well placed to tell us how people there are feeling right now about this. People are feeling defiant obviously it's very heartbreaking people are starting to come to terms with the, the, the killings and so many people knew somebody who was in there or knew somebody who worked in there but also there's a sense of we have been here before 
the Westgate attack in September 2013, which killed nearly 70 people. More recently, two years later, the Garissa University yes, but attack. You're also saying that from the tweets that you're reading, people are sending out messages saying we're trapped in bathrooms, we're trapped in parts of the building. There are several people who are sending out messages to friends. Some of them ha have been tweeting saying that I have personally spoken to one journalist colleague who is still inside um, a toilet in one of the buildings there. He was there for an interview with his crew. They're still hoping to get help, uh, that help will come to them. But so far, there have been reports that the security forces are going building by building, trying to uh, evacuate them and make sure they get everyone to safety. What would you say uh, Theresa May has achieved as, as we talk uh, towards the end of her visit to the continent? Ben, if the feeling was that Britain was a little late to the party, I think over the last three days she has tried to redeem herself and to redeem Britain. The U.S. is very active here. And, of course, German Chancellor Angela Merkel just wrapped up her trip here. The French President Emmanuel Macron has also been in, in Africa a record six times. So everybody's trying to dance with Africa, so to speak. But China certainly at the top of that. China controls the tune. And how much political influence does that give China in the region? China is getting more out of this relationship with Africa than... Africa is and China is trying to respond to that going out of its way to say that these are not vanity projects that they do in, in Africa that they are not involved in the governments and the governance of African countries they're just purely on a win-win scale with African countries which is easier said than really done well I was going to say the Chinese might want to present it as win-win but presumably they do want plenty in return for this money they want a lot they want natural resources for instance in Angola which is heavily indebted to China and has had to give up some of those in all over the continent in Djibouti they're building what is billed as Africa's largest uh, free trade zone and again there is a lot of indebtedness for generations to come that's gonna uh, that's gonna come with that kind of deal so China is trying to assuage some of those fears and say listen we're trying to encourage you to export more to the huge Chinese market